Charmaine, and today I am interviewing a wonderful woman who is highly anointed, vibrant, and a powerful prophet to the nation and the nations. And she's here today to talk about Lifetime's new reality show, Preach. Help me welcome Dr. Takeda Williams to the show. Welcome. Well, thank you, Lady Charmaine. I'm so elated to be here with you today. Well, I'm glad to have you on the show. And as I was telling you earlier, you and I were already friends on Facebook. And to see what the Lord has done in your ministry from when you started the television show on television and now look at you. Now you, I mean, you're literally nation, national and international on Lifetime doing what God has called you to do, what you love to do. And that's preach the word of God. <laughs> so that's a blessing. So congratulations. Well, thank you so much. I am actually still in a state of awe. It's like, Lord, are you serious? Did you really do this? So I'm just, it's just a wonderful time, and I'm just so blessed to be a part of such great endeavor. Now, I know people are, you know, basically formally being introduced to you now for those who don't know your ministry or follow your ministry. So can you tell us about your ministry, where you're located, how long you've been in ministry, when did you first hear the call of God to go into ministry? Give us all those details. Yes, absolutely. I would love to share that. I am um, a pastor of a church in Columbus, Ohio. And for a while, we had two churches, Columbus, Ohio, um, Jacksonville, Florida. However, it was just such a strain to do two different states. I can understand two churches in one city, but just flying across the country um, to handle and house and uh, facilitate two different churches in two different locations was a strain. So my husband and I relocated fully back to Columbus, Ohio, and we uh, are pastors of the Impact Christian Center in the capital city. I am also uh, what many people call TV preachers, a televangelist. I have been on Christian television for six years now, uh, and just touching lives and blessing lives all over the world. I travel extensively. Um, of course, all over the country and the world as well, just preaching the gospel of Jesus and prophesying the word of the Lord. And I enjoy what I do. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher, I'm a prophet, <laughs> and I love it all. And God has anointed me to do what I'm called to do. Now, you are a prophetess. When did you receive the call into the office of a, of a prophet? And what was your response when God called you to that office? I remember sitting in church. I was a church secretary at the time, but I remember sitting in church years back, and my husband whispered over to me while we were in service. He wasn't the pastor. We were just members of a church, faithful members serving in the Lord's house. And my husband whispered over during service, and he said, God told me to tell you that he called you to be a prophet to nation." This was way back in 1994. In 1994, my husband gave me that prophetic word. In addition to the word of the Lord concerning me being called to the office of the prophet, he also told me that my prophetic voice would go into Hollywood. Not just my regular voice, but my prophetic voice. And he told me that my prophetic voice would go into Hollywood and it would reach people beyond the four walls of the church, and people would be impacted by the word of the Lord that came forth out of my mouth. When he told me that, I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I was so frightened by the fact that I was called, one, to ministry, and two, to such high call, the office of the prophet. I was happy being a church secretary, I was comfortable in what I done, and I really didn't desire ministry at all. And I told my husband, I said, like, you know what you're talking about, because I was, that was fear speaking out of me. He said, he didn't get offended. He said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to take you home, and I'm going to pray with you. When he took me home, he literally, we didn't eat, we didn't get any drink of water. He took me to the floor of our bedroom. All I know is when I came back to myself, it was about three hours later, and he, he came back into the room. I didn't even know he left. And he said, what did you birth? What did you have? Mm. And I knew I had a birthing experience. I said, I just birthed forth the call of a prophet and a teacher. And from that day, my life has never been the same. 
Wow. Now, now that's a powerful testimony. And now that God is, you know, your preacher, prophet, teacher, and now you are on a brand new docu-series called Preach on Lifetime. How did this opportunity even come about for you? This opportunity came to me when I was actually living in Florida. I was still in Jacksonville, Florida. It came in 2013. And it came by way of um, Hollywood, someone from the media company that we're working with, going to my website and calling my office to at least try to have a conversation with me. And when I saw Hollywood, I immediately shunned it. I told my staff, no, don't call them back. You know, I don't know what this is about, but no. Well, (laughs) they were persistent. I kept saying, no, I don't want to talk. Well, last year, 2014, they still had not given up. And they reached another prophetess that I know and asked her. She knew how to get in touch with me. (laughs) So she called me and she told me what the call was about. They wanted to do a reality show on... Uh, prophetesses, female preachers, women prophets. And so I finally engaged the conversation, found out what their vision was, and uh, just progressively moved forward with it. And despite all the controversy, I am happy about my decision because I do believe that this is the will of God for my life and the prophetic word that my husband spoke over me coming to pass. Now, how long did the process take from when you were first contacted until you started taping the show? Okay, uh, so considering that I didn't respond for a whole year, once I did respond um, in th- last year in 2014, uh, the process, we actually entered into our pilot about five months after we began to have a series of conversations. And um, about September of last year is when we uh, performed the pilot. And then this year in February is when we went into full-fledged filming of the new show. So the whole process at large took about a whole year. Okay, so Lifetime saw the pilot, loved it, and said, we're going to pick it up. How many many shows did they pick it up for? Is it six or 12? How many did they pick it up for? Uh, yeah, initially it is six. Okay. It is, um, they picked it up for six shows, and I'm comfortable with that as well. I think this is new for Lifetime, mm-hmm. uh, and it's also new for me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, com- <laughs> I'm comfortable with that. I know, you know, uh, what I look like and how I sound on Christian television, but I'm interested in seeing how uh, things come across on a major network such as Lifetime. Mm-hmm. So I think it's good and it's comfortable for everyone. I know the results are, are going to be great because I do know um, the content of the show, and I really do believe it's going to be incredible. Okay. Now tell us about some of your castmates. Who are the other castmates on the show? Well, the castmates are all prophetesses from Ohio, and uh, one of the prophetesses, uh, are out of Cleveland, Prophetess Belinda Scott. Then there's Prophetess Linda Rourke, mm-hmm. who's out of, I believe, Trenton, Ohio, and then Prophetess Kelly Cruz, who is also in Ohio. I do know all of the other prophetesses, and I did know them prior to us becoming a part of this reality show. I've known Prophetess Linda actually for some time. She used to come to Columbus, Ohio, um, when I would hold some conferences and meetings and she would just come up and just be a blessing and be a support and just glean from my ministry. She's someone that's always admired my ministry and the anointing of my life. I preached for prophetess, uh, Belinda Scott and many of her conferences before her and her husband are friends of, of my husband and I. And then prophetess Kelly Cruz, we met through a mutual friend. And so I do know them all. And then we all have protégés someone, a young woman that we're mentoring and training and developing mm-hmm. they can be developed in walking in the call of God that is on their life. Okay. Now you have this word boom that you say on the show. Now where did that come from? I should have been saying boom for years. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yes, it, 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 for anyone that watches my Christian TV show, they are well acquainted with me saying boom. 
and uh, my editor, he actually put this explosive fire that uh, in the graphics when I say boom on my other other telecast. And that just speaks of who I am. I'm a woman of a fiery spirit. And typically how God uses me, when I open up my mouth, there is truly an explosion that happens. And uh, the power of God is like that dunamis. One of the words in uh, in the Bible, in the New Testament, for power is dunamis, mm-hmm. from which we get our English word dynamite. And so that's how I uh, experience the power of God come out of me in a dynamite way. It's just an explosion that breaks forth. And boom describes that. It describes that power. Okay. So I want to talk about, you know, I was reading on Facebook and um, under a lot of the comments under the trailer. And so, you know, there's a lot of mixed reviews just from watching the trailer. We haven't even got a chance to see the show, but a lot of people have a lot to say. And this is one of the comments that I saw. It was when you uh, chest bumped a gentleman in service. And that, and I basically heard it from a lot of men. What was the purpose behind you chest bumping the gentleman in service? Because we haven't got a chance to see the whole show, so we have no idea. And the only person that can answer that for us is you. So I want to, that, that's a topic number one. Okay, wonderful. And that is a great question. And uh, I do have an answer for that. And the answer is very authentic. I I never do anything the Lord doesn't tell me to do. The Lord, we were in a deliverance service. That whole clip is literally from a church service. And it's uh, our deliverance service where all four prophetesses are flowing in uh, our gifts and helping people obtain deliverance and breakthrough in their lives. This particular man that the the Lord didn't say chest bump. He said, I want you to charge that man and just bump him. Mm. People named it chest bump. He (laughs) says, because uh, the Lord says, the reason why I want you to do this is because there are walls that are going to come down and he's going to be impacted. It's like he's about to have a collision with the power of God. And in order to experience a collision, there has to be a forceful impact. And that man went out under the power of God. His pastor said, that man has never, ever, until this moment right here, he's never went out under the power of God. That man's life was impacted, and he experienced the very thing that God wanted him to experience, and that was those walls coming down. Amen. And um, another thing I read, um, someone wanted to go to change.org and have the show taken off the air before they even see the show. How did that make you feel? Have you even heard of that? I was surprised. And we haven't even seen the show yet. Well, at that point, I was I was surprised initially, yes, Mm -hmm. that someone over a 30 second clip with how can you come against the show to have it? basically taken off the air when it's not even on the air. Mm-hmm. You know, I be- I felt that people were being critical, judgmental, and most of all, presumptuous. At that point, it made me question, like, okay, what is the motive mm-hmm. behind such drive to sh- try to shut down something that hasn't even really fully come forth? And so initially, you know, that, that made me wonder what really what's going on. But I found out that it's actually quite, quite customary. You know, this is not new to any type of new reality show. It's typical, um, based upon my conversation um, with uh, Lifetime, that this is typical that this type of of thing happens to new shows. And then also, one thing I know, when God is doing something that's much greater than our own finite mind, you know, people sometimes feel like they lose control and What people can't control, they will try to kill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a God thing, and it's really out of all of our control. And I believe that the Lord is going to have his way through whatever he has purposed to do through this new show called Preach. Now, what what is it that you want the viewing audience to learn um, about you through watching this show? I want them to learn um, that, number one, that I am... Uh, a, a woman, I am a mother, I am a wife, I am a preacher, I am a prophet, but I'm just not some nebulous entity that just supernaturally exists. 
but I am a person. I'm a human being. Though I'm anointed and God has endowed me with gifts, you know, I've got to deal with situations in my life just like everybody else does. You know, I want a mother who, you know, may be struggling with her children, you know, to see how I handle when adversity hits my life and hits my children. I want them to see the overcomer in me so it can inspire them to be an overcomer and to never quit. I want them to see that uh, they too can be unstoppable because nothing can stop me. In the in the show, you know, real life, my daughter, you know, goes, talks to my husband and tell him she's 20 years old. She just turned 20. Daddy, I'm pregnant again. She already had her first child when she was 16 years old. I love my daughter. You know, I understand everybody makes mistakes. We support her. We love our granddaughter. But here it is again now. She's she's a single mother. She's not married. We preach against abstinence. Mm -hmm. We don't believe in sex before marriage. What do I do when a problem hits my house? Mm -hmm. You know, do I condemn my own and support the world? But but reject my own child? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And so I want them to see, you know, the diversity. I want them to see that, you know, how do I deal with problems and give them remedy and help them, you know, overcome life situations. Everybody has problems. Problems are not prejudice. They will come to anybody's house. And I really, really want people to see the overcomer in me so that I can help them in overcoming. Well, I'm so glad you said that because a lot of people think once you become a Christian, life is perfect. You don't have any problems. But Jesus said in this life, you shall have tribulation. And so and yeah. we do. And it does hit our home. But I'm so glad because people think once we name the name of Christ, everything's perfect. It's not perfect. We just know how to go through and we go through with Christ Jesus. But we have the same problems that the yeah. world does. But we have a man that gives us hope and his name is Jesus. That's what separates us yeah. from the world. So we don't go under sink and yeah. drown. We have a God that he's our life preserver and he preserves us. <laughs> so we don't drown, Ooh. you know, under our circumstances. Yeah. We could say no with Jesus. We are above the circumstances, but it's how we go through our circumstances. That's different from the world. Absolutely. Oh yeah. God. Yes. That's powerful. We are above our circumstances and I want people to see that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I want them to see that no matter what you can with Christ, all things are possible mm -hmm. because we believe. I really want them to see that. And I think that how we're delivering uh, the, me the message is the same. I'm not changing the message just because I'm on my time. Mm -hmm. But the method of getting across our message is just different. Amen. I know that that's a blessing. And so we know what you want us to take from you. What do you want us to take away from the entire show? Yes, the, what I would love for others to take away from the entire show is encouragement. Mm -hmm. I want people to be encouraged by my gift. I do. I want them to know that there is help and there is hope. I want them to know that God has a solution for every last one of their problems. I want them to take away healing. I want them to take away courage. I want them to take away strength. I want them to take away faith. I want them to take away hope. And I really, really am thankful for the opportunity to help somebody else through this show called Preach on Lifetime. Amen. That's a blessing. Well, I just want to thank you so much for coming on the show. And I just want to remind the viewing audience to make sure that you tune in Friday, June the 5th for Lifetime's brand new show entitled Preach with Dr. Takeda Williams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love how you say that. <laughs> <laughs> and can you give you have a website where people can actually go and learn more about you and your ministry and everything that you have to offer. So if they're ever in Columbus, Ohio, what is your website? Uh, it is experienceicc.org, and next week I will be launching drtakedawilliams.com. Amen. Praise God. Well, again, I want to thank you yes. so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, Lady Charmaine. It's been a wonderful experience. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Lady Charmaine, I'm on Friday night.